El Nino. Gilbert Melendez is in the house. My man, how are you feeling? Feeling great, man. A couple days out for the fight. You know, all the hard work is done and uh, just looking forward to fighting. When Joe Silva called you up and told you, listen, uh, what do you think about a fight with Diego Sanchez? What did you think? Man, I, I got excited. I got excited. You know, again, he's someone um, I think is a pioneer in the sport, and I, I've, you know, I look up to. You know, I looked up to growing up. I was like, all right, this guy's great. You know, and uh, I like his style, and uh, I thought it made for a good matchup. You know, I got the chills a little bit, of course. You know, out the gate, and took a deep breath, and I said, all right, let's let, let's do it. I think most hardcore fans are are really excited to see this fight. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, you know, we're both warriors, of course, you know, and um, Diego's been a pioneer in the sport for a long time. He brings a lot of courage to the cage. He has that warrior spirit, and uh, I'm the same type of guy, you know. Um, I think uh, we'd rather, you know, go down striking and going out in battle than, than winning a, a stick-and-move decision. So, you know, we have, a lot of, we have a lot on the line, a lot of, you know, Mexican-American pride on the line here, so we want to see the, the toughest Mexican-American in the cages, you know what I mean? Five of his last eight fights have been a fight of the night. Wow. <laughs> is yeah. that something that gets you excited? Or is that something that other opponents have used his aggressiveness against him? How do you th think that will play out with yourself? I mean, there has been a blueprint. You know, the best way to fight Diego is to stick and move. You know, to, you know how to fight him is don't fight him. You know, try to win the scorecards. You know, that, that's just not my style. And I think um, it's been the same for me, too. People that have uh, been successful with me have been trying to stick and move and, and use the space and kind of avoid the fight. Um, you know, with that said, I think it's a, it's a good matchup and, uh, you know, it'll be a tough fight. It's very rare to see two Mexican-American fighters getting in there and scrapping. Um, when I think of that, I think of you, I think of Cain Velasquez, I think of Diego Sanchez and Andy Alvarez mm -hmm. as guys that are wearing that mantle of being Mexican-American fighters in mixed martial arts. Is that a mantle that you wear, that, that you're even aware of? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I, 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 try to, I try to have that, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's sometimes my, my Spanish is horrible, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, coming from Santa Ana okay. and everything. But, uh, but, you know, I'm working on it. But a good way for me to relate, you know, it's, it is when I fight. You know, I think, uh, you know, there's no doubt there's Mexican blood in me. And, um, you know, I, I take pride on that. I take pride on that warrior spirit. And I grew up watching all the boxing, Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, Chiquita Hernandez. And, um, you know, there's some of my fighters and people I looked up to, even, you know, De La Hoya as well. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I take pride in that, and I want to be that guy. A little bit of a philosophical question, but what does that mean to you, to be a Mexican-American fighter? I couldn't really say. It's just, you know, something that's, I guess it's in you, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you, you want to be that warrior, you know, I think it's like respected, you know, and it's, it's part of the culture, you know, the boxing is a big part of the culture and, and, uh, you know, and they appreciate that warrior spirit and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I take pride in it, you know, I think it's something uh, back in the days I probably would have been a warrior, just uh, I'm a modern day warrior nowadays. Uh, you talk about growing up being a Mexican American from Santa Ana, mm -hmm. uh, you, you lived there all the way through your high school years. Uh, can you talk to me about growing up being, you know, from an immigrant family in Santa Ana? Sometimes there are racial tensions down there. Yeah, you know, Santa Ana is a, is a rough city, you know, growing up, I guess. But, um, you know, I, I, I was lucky enough to be surrounded by great people. You know what I mean? My, my parents are great. My dad's from, you know, Tijuana, and he uh, came here when he was young, and my mom was born here. Her parents are from Mexico. I, I found wrestling that kind of kept me straight and stuff. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it was out there, and um, you definitely got to be able to hold your own and can't be no, uh, you know, no punk out there, definitely, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, a it's a great city it's come a long way um, did you run across some of that racial tension in your youth um, you know uh, you know it's predominantly Mexican out there you know what I mean and uh, and um, you know you, you see you see I've seen more people affected by it you know what I mean not not so much myself you know you're in Santa Ana and um, it's out of the Orange County you know it was maybe the city that was uh, you know, the, the poorest out there and, uh, you know, a lot more uh, obstacles for some of my friends out there and, um, you know, just living situations and everything. And, uh, you know, and I guess maybe, um, you know, maybe just treated a little bit unfair. You know, I, I couldn't really. By authorities? Yeah, I would say more. Yeah, I guess you could say something like that. I like the Santa Ana PD. There's a lot of good people out there and I think I've met some really good people. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, you don't want to be you don't want to be nervous when you see a cop, you know, you should be feel safe, you know what I mean? And I guess you just have that nervous feeling out there. And, uh, you know, I think they were profiling kids when I was younger, but, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, again, I don't want to say bad about Santa, and it's been a great city, you know. Gil, you know why I like it? Uh, not only are you a tremendous fighter, and you go out there, and you're looking to scrap, but from what I understand, you actually put a great value on your education as well. I know you didn't get your college degree, but you were studying to become a teacher. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, again, I think some of the people besides my, my father and my mother who inspired me was, you know, in high school, I was, uh, you know, I was around great teachers, and I, I loved being around Santa Ana, and I, I love the idea of uh, being a teacher and, and maybe coaching high school wrestling, you know, I guess because, you know, that's some of what, um, 
you know, the, you know, my coach did, and, and he's someone I looked up to as well, and uh, some of my coaches, Rick Lara and Scott Glab. So, uh, yeah, it sounded like that sounded like a good deal, and that's something I was exposed to. You know, you're not exposed to much out there, you know, besides uh, family and, and what I was and, and what I saw at Santa Ana High School. And, um, yeah, you know, being a teacher and having some summers off and, uh, you know, <laughs> coaching wrestling and living that life and, you know, being a kid forever didn't sound too bad. When I meet a lot of fighters, they don't really put a whole heck of a lot of value in a higher education, it seems you're not that way. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, if you want to have a future in this world or if you, you know, you got a plan, you got a plan for the future and, you know, education will get you further. You know, uh, you know, I didn't get my degree, but I was working on it before I figured out fighting. But, do you uh, want to go back? Uh, you know, sometimes I do want to, you know, go back. You know, you know, sometimes I make my dad proud or make my family proud. And, you know, he said, hey, your gym would look, I got a great gym in San Francisco. So it would look a lot better if you had your college degree up there. <laughs> and, uh, that's the kind of stuff my dad nice. tells me, you know. So, that's parenting. I uh, yeah, like it. That is parenting. But, yeah, you know, um, you know, it, it goes along way there's a lot a lot of guys in Santa Ana have a lot of hurdles in, in front of them you know some people don't have that many hurdles and uh, you know and um, you know p more so than me in Santa Ana and uh, you know and it's uh, and these guys got to overcome that a little bit and um, you know and you know getting a good education can help them do that a uh, couple random questions for you favorite cartoon growing up was what uh, favorite cartoon growing up was probably uh, Thundercats Thundercats Voltron you know I used to watch that when I was young you know maybe you like the Japanese one uh, yeah I, I didn't even know at the time yeah, I, just, exactly, I, just, right? I, just, I just like the robots you know and uh, you know and maybe Maybe G.I. Joe a little bit as well. When you yeah. go back to Santa Ana, uh, what's a, uh, and you're on a cheat day, of course. Okay, cheat day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you like to go get? Um, well, you know, after wrestling practice in high school, Santa Ana right across the corner was uh, Tapatia number two, <laughs> and, uh, right there on Bristol and okay. first, between Bristol and first. And uh, Man, and, you uh, still remember that. I mean, oh, I still go back. I'll still go back when <laughs> I'm in Santa go. Ana right there. 24 yeah. hour Tapatia, dude, you can't beat that. And uh, I used to go there all the time. There's Tapatia number one, too. But uh, Tapatia number two, I used to go at my. Uh, that's your joint. My, that's my joint with all my buddies out there. And, uh, you know, so when I'm in town, I'll go there. And uh, I used to go to Tacos Mexico as well. But Tapatia number two was, was the place. After a fight, the first thing that you like to eat is what? I mean, I'm gonna go for a burrito or a pizza right out the gate. You know, something with a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm lacking the carbs right now. I want a nice big a tortilla, a tortilla, or a, or a nice big pizza, <laughs> man. Something, you know. Okay, I got you. UFC 166, man. The the, the card is absolutely stacked. Cain Velasquez, Daniel Cormier versus um, uh, uh, Big Country Roy Nelson. Right. And man, you're right there as well. Tell everybody why they should get this fight. I mean, this is going to be a, a great card. You know, just on the pay per view alone, you got Daniel Cormier versus Roy Nelson. I mean, the winner of that is a a big contender. Maybe Daniel Cormier goes to 205. Um, you know, more, me versus Diego is going to be a great fight. But um, oh, it's going to be a war. Come yes. on. They got even on the undercard. They got Hector Lombard versus Nate Marquardt, and uh, you know I think it's going to be a you know right now the UFC is on fire. You know what I mean, and uh, you don't want to miss you know what's going on the evolution of the sport right now um, with the last uh, um, Gust Gustafsson versus John Jones. I mean the, the sport is on fire right now. We're watching evolution before our eyes right now, so I think people should tune in and and watch it.